Welcome to my talk about time-sensitive networking TSN with mainline embedded Linux. A quick introduction to myself. I joined Toradex in 2011. I spearheaded there the embedded Linux adoption. I introduced the upstream first policy and at times I've been a top 10 U-boot contributor and top 10 uh, Linux kernel ARMSOC contributor. We have an industrial embedded Linux platform called Torizon and it's fully based on mainline technology. It uses mainline U-boot with Distroboot, KMS, DRM graphics, with Etnavi for Nuvo and over the air update with OS3 and for the application framework, you can use Docker or Podman. What are we talking about today? I'm going to introduce TSN. We're going to have a look at the traffic control TC subsystem. We look at the credit based shaper, CVS earliest transmit time first, ETF, and also the time aware priority scheduler, Taprio. Then we have a look at the mainline TSN ecosystem with the Linux Precision Time Protocol, PTP, and also the ALSA and GStreamer audio video transport protocol, AVTP plugins. And I'm going to show you also some TSN capable embedded Linux ports. Uh, we have two flavors there. We have some with the Intel i210 Ethernet controller with the IGB driver, as well as the Synopsys Designware Ethernet quality of service <coughs> controller IP integrated into the NXP i.mx8 and plus SOC with the DW Mac STM Mac driver. And at the end, I ha also have some hardware here, and I, I can show you some live demonstration. Let's get started. Time-sensitive networking, TSN, it was formerly known as audio-video bridging, AVB, and IEEE basically expanded its scope and then rebranded it as TSN. It's basically a set of standards enabling time-sensitive audio-video applications on local area networks. And so it has, for example, time synchronization or also bounded transmission latency. Then, of course, the resource management in a network, the availability and the reservation of bandwidth. And, of course, the whole application interoperability. So this table shows you the different standards available. So there is the IEEE 802.1AS. It's about timing and synchronization. Then the 802.1QAV is about forwarding and queuing. And that is called forwarding and queuing for time-sensitive streams, FQTSS. Then there is the 802.1QAT which is about path control and reservation with, for example, the stream reservation protocol, SRP. Then there is 802.1BA, the bridging part. This is the audio video bridging AVB systems. Then we have IEEE 1722 AVTP. This is for the AV audio video transport. It's basically a layer two transport protocol for time-sensitive applications. And then in the 1722, there is also AVDECC, that is about device management and control. So device discovery, enumeration, connection management, and control protocol. Then the 802.1QBU and .3BR is about forwarding and queuing with the frame preemption. Then the 802.1QBV, forwarding and queuing with the enhancement for scheduled traffic. 
then the 8021 QCA with path control and reservation, the dot one QCC about the central configuration methods, and the dot one QCI about time-based ingress policing, and the dot one CB about seamless redundancy. So basically frame replication and then elimination for reliability purpose. This is just a, a summarization of all the standards available for TSN. So how does it integrate in Linux? In Linux, we have the traffic control TC subsystem. That is basically the control plane for the whole TSN. So it allows managing and manipulating the transmission of packets of network traffic. So you can policing, classifying, shaping, and also scheduling traffic. It allows mangling packets during classification by using filters and actions. And then you can use queuing disciplines, so-called queue disks, to queue up and later schedule your traffic. And one can enqueue requested packets so they can be queued for later transmission. And DQ is basically a request that a queued up packet can be chosen then for immediate transmission. And it implements the forwarding and queuing enhancements for time sensitive streams, the so-called FQTSS that we saw before in the table. And the actual utility in Linux to, to do that stuff is the TC utility, usually in SBIN TC. So let's look at one of the queue disks, for example, the multi queue priority MQ prio queue disk. This is a very simple queuing discipline. It basically just maps traffic flows to hardware queues. So if you have hardware that has a multiple queues, it makes sense to just map them basically one-to-one -to, -one to, uh, yeah, to such flows. It exposes the hardware transmission queues. And it basically defines how Linux network priorities then map to those hardware traffic classes. So the, basically a mapping from traffic classes to the hardware queues. And this can then be used by later QDisk operating on per queue base. So like, for example, the CBS or ETF that we will see later. So if we look at the credit base shaper, CBS, it basically allows uh, credit-based fair queuing. So it's basically a computationally efficient way how to you know, do a fair queuing of network traffic. The way that works is that you have a certain credit and you have a so-called idle slope. That is, if nothing is transmitted in, in your queue, then you get a certain credit with, with a certain slope. That's the idle slope. And when your queue is sending, then it's using up the send slope. So you basically have to pay for for when you pay uh, transmit traffic and your credit will decrease by this sense slope. And then of course it also defines a high and a low credit. So the high credit is the maximum credit that you gain when you continue not to transmit anything. The idle slope will give you more credit but there is also a maximum. And the low credit is the same just on the, if you keep sending you end up with the lowest credit that, that you will have. And if you do not have enough, then you can no more send. And that is basically as per IEEE 802 1Q 2018, which was formerly known as the dot one QAV. And in the graphics, you can see that we basically have three uh, AVB packets queued. And then 
we start sending and you basically see a fourth packet coming in and if you now have interfering traffic that is shown on, on the lower part, basically as soon as your credit is positive, the AVB packet can be launched as soon as the interfering traffic is finished. And then when the credit gets negative, basically the third packet cannot be transmitted immediately, but it's basically held and can then only be transmitted again. We see that towards the middle when you have enough credit again, then that can be sent. That is basically how this credit-based shaper uh, works, okay? Then another QDISC is the earliest transmit time first, ETF. It's not an FQTSS feature per se, but certain uh, Ethernet controllers, like for example the i210, but, but not the DWMAC, they provide some launch time feature. So basically in hardware you can queue stuff and, and give it also a launch time. And that QDISC basically enables frames to be transmitted at a specific time and make use of such hardware uh, feature. And the way that is done, it basically maps the SO TX time socket option, uh, which allows the application to specify at, at the specific time you want to configure the transmission for each frame. And the ETF QDisk, it ensures that frames coming from multiple sockets are then sent to the hardware exactly ordered by this transmission time. Then the enhancements for scheduled traffic, EST, this allows basically that from each queue that it can be scheduled relative to a known time scale. So you can look at it like a transmission gate that is associated with each queue. And basically when the states of that transmission day, gate can be open or closed, and that determines then whether the actual frames can be selected for transmission or not. So each port associated with a gate control list, GCL, it is an ordered list of those gate operations. And that is as per IEEE 802-1Q2018, formerly 1QBV. Uh, and it allows the system to be configured and to participate in complex networks basically similar to what is envisioned by the IEEE 802 one qcc 2018. And usually the way that can be done is this GCL schedule. Of course, somebody has to come up with a GCL schedule. That usually requires a central entity which has the full knowledge of all nodes and traffic produced by those nodes and their requirements. And then it can basically produce a schedule for the whole network. And this is mainly used in, uh, for primary use cases uh, for industrial. Uh, it's similar to other field buses where you basically have the full knowledge of, of you know, uh, what your network looks like. No? Then there is a time-aware priority shaper, Taprio Q disks. It's uh, similar to the MQ, MQ PRIO, but it defines how Linux network priorities map into traffic classes. And this mapping uh, maps those classes to hardware queues. And that enables configuring GCL for, for a given interface. That again is uh, IEEE 8 021Q 2018. If we now look at the Linux ecosystem, so what exists there? So for the Linux kernel networking subsystem, we just saw there is the TC traffic control, and then of course all the Q disks. Uh, with, with a few that I previously discussed. 
And then on top of that, you also have uh, the Linux PTP project that is about uh, time synchronization uh, using the generalized precision time protocol, GPTP. So this is usually used as a base uh, infrastructure that all your nodes in the network actually talk about the same time. Because otherwise it would be difficult to, to schedule stuff at a specific time if they don't even have the same time reference node. And on top of that, you can then use, for example, the libAVTP project, which is about audio video transport protocol AVTP. It's an implementation of this uh, protocol standard. And usually you don't want to do that uh, directly in your application, but use some other frameworks, which for audio that's usually also, and for video that, or also for audio that might be also GStreamer. So audio video transport protocol, AVTP, they have then plugins there, so you can fairly easily uh, from an application layer make use of, of this, which basically underneath also uses libAVTP again. So for ALSA, for audio, there is basically the so-called uh, AAF, the ALSA AVTP audio format plugin. This is an advanced Linux sound architecture, ALSA low-level framework, providing the audio functionality under Linux. And if you now there want to use AVTP, you can use this AAF, which is a, basically a regular PCM plugin. And it uses audio video transport protocol, AVTP, and allows transmitting, receiving audio samples through a TSN capable network. And that allows you to easily implement AVTP talker or listener functionalities. But again, also here, you require a GPTP, so for the AVTP talkers and listeners to actually share the same time reference. And usually that's uh, called the presentation time from AVTP, so it, it informs when certain PCM samples are actually presented to the application layer. And the FQTSS, that allows you to provide bandwidth reservation and uh, traffic prioritization for such an AVTP system. Then there are also the GStreamer AVTP plugins. So GStreamer is basically a higher level framework which provides multimedia functionality. It allows encoding, multiplexing, filtering and rendering to applications. And it's this particular plugin is part of the GSD plugins bad collection. And it uses uh, audio video transport protocol AVTP to handle such uh, AVTP packetization. And on top of that, it implements typical talker and listener functionalities basically out of the box. And it can, of course, leverage be leveraged by any GStreamer based application in order to then implement such a TSN audio video application use cases. And in detail, the actual plugins, they are called AVTP AAF. And I have it here in parentheses. There is always a, a DPay and a, so to, to basically get the payload out of packets again or to put it into the payload into the packet. So extracting or payload encoding raw audio from respectively into such AAF AVTP PDUs. That is as per IEEE 17.22. Then there is also the AVTP CVF that does the same with uh, compressed video. And then 
it also has a directly syncs available, the AVTP sync, which basically sends AVTP PDUs over the network, and it has also an AVTP source, which basically receives such AVTP PDUs from the network. And whoever played with GStreamer knows th that how this source and sync stuff works. So basically, as a source, you receive multimedia data, and then you can pipe it through further GStreamer operations. So for example, you would, would get those, that tra uh, multimedia traffic from the network, and then you can, you know, pipe it through further encoders and, and, and an, uh, another sync, which might be a display or something like that. And on the other side, if, if you have, for example, a camera available on your system, you can do some processing and then basically pipe it to a sync, which then sends that traffic off to the network. Now let's have a look at some uh, TSN-capable embedded Linux ports. Like I initially said, we have some with the Intel i210 Ethernet controller on board. That is these two uh, modules shown on the top right. There is a yeah, this is actually a predominant PCI Express TSN network interface controller. Uh, it uses the IGB driver. And it's used on module, for the on module uh, gigabit Ethernet uh, controller on the Toradex Apalis T30 as well as uh, Apalis TK1 modules. It's basically a, a PCI Express network controller, basically a Mac and a Fi all in one chip. It's the, the chip shown with the red arrow there. Then another hardware which is TSN capable is using the Synopsys Designware isn't a quality of service uh, controller IP and that is for example integrated into the NXPI.MX 8M Plus SOC. Uh, this SOC actually has two Macs integrated. Uh, one is a, a good old FEC, so the fast Ethernet controller. Well, nowadays it can also do gigabit, but it's just a, uh, basically a continuation of that the older Motorola IP you now. But as a second network interface, it also integrates this uh, designware IP, which has uh, real TSN capability. As for the driver in Linux, that is using the DW Mac, STM Mac driver, and it is used for the on module gigabit Ethernet Phi. So basically, what the arrows show, of course, the Mac is integrated into the main SOC. But we also have the Ethernet Phi for, the, for this second uh, Mac basically integrated on the module. In our case, we usually use uh, MicroL uh, Phi's, which is nowadays a microchip. Okay, now if you would want to actually make use of this, how would we go about that? So if you want to build an open embedded Yocto project image which start with such a TSN functionality, you can basically start with our regular TDX reference multimedia image and we can extend that. You have to use the master branch because uh, the Dunfell branch is too old uh, basically the GStreamer version because the AVTP support requires at least version 1.18 or later. So you have to do, add the following uh, additions to your conf local conf. You basically can uh, append your image install with GStreamer libav and GStreamer plugins bad AVTP and also you can add the plugins ugly, it gives you some further uh, 
uh, plugins. Uh, we think the ugly ones is, for example, the ASF and also the Meta and the uh, for you know encoding X2, H264. Then some tools that you might want is of course IP Route 2, which has a, its separate um, packet of uh, a package of uh, IP Route 2 TC for the traffic control utility, and then on the Leap sound side, there is the PCM AAF, and then of course Leap AVTP, which some of these uh, plugins uh, underneath use. And there is also um, for the NXP stuff, there is a one that is called Package Group FSL G Stream Commercial, and another useful thing if you want to look at actual traffic might be TCP dump. Then for this uh, NXP specific G stream stuff, you need to add the license flag accepted commercial. And then on the package config side, you also need to make sure that the plugins pad include the AVTP stuff and the ugly include uh, all this, uh, you know, required for the H264. And on the ALSA plugin, you have to add the AAF explicitly. And then here I also show a custom recipe to actually build the plugins pad with such a configuration. I mean, well, upstreamed all this, so if, if, if you use a regular uh, open embedded master stuff, this is now all upstream. You don't need any uh, special custom recipe any longer, okay? But I, I'm still showing it here. Basically, uh, yeah, it, it is basically the provider of this AVTP. That, that's this provides lineup. So, basically, as part of the plugins pad, it then also includes AVTP functionality. And then you also have to yeah, extend this uh, plugins pad with, with this uh, AVTP package config. Again, that is meanwhile I upstreamed all of this, so the regular open embedded core uh, plugin pad recipe nowadays has this already built in. So you can just you know use that package config like I showed showed here. Uh, it knows what the AVTP is. But that is how, how such package config in the recipe is actually done it, through the configure stuff. You have to define uh, what that exactly means when it builds it. Huh? Then on the Linux kernel configuration side, make sure you enable all the you know, required network scheduling stuff. Like we discussed before, of course, you need the, the, the base NetSCAD functionality as well as then the NetSCAD of old, of course, the multi queue CBS, ETF, TAPRIO, MQPRIO, whatever other uh, kind of uh, such functionality you want to use later. Then in, in the case of the DW Mac, you also have to make sure that your queue configuration, so those hardware queues that we talked about earlier, that you make those available. You usually do that via device tree. For example, in our case, that is the location, Arch ARM64 boot, DTS, Freescale, IMX 8M plus Verdin DTSI. And there, you basically have an RX node and uh, similar also a TX node and there you actually configure all these queues. You basically say how much queues you have available. So this hardware usually gives you five queues and then you can configure those queues and the actual priority for it. So more or less we just map them straight through 
So Q1 priority zero, Q2 priority one, and so forth. And you can do the same for the for your TX nodes. And that just like discussed earlier does a one-to-one -one mapping from uh, Linux traffic priorities to to these hardware queues. Then, of course, there is also a certain uh, system setup required to get you started in a, in a TCN system. And basically, first we have to map the Linux internal packet priority, the so-called SO priority, to a certain VLAN header PCP field. And the way you do that is by the, basically, IP Utility is a IP link add link ETH1. So this is uh, basically the Ethernet that, that is on, on, for example, uh, on the DW Mac. And you name it ETH1.5. So the, the dot five, remember that's the VLAN. So we use VLAN five. So also we say that explicitly there, type VLAN ID five. And then we can put an egress uh, QS mapping and we also just map two to two and three to three and then we bring that link up like that so that is basically the top level configuration that we have these hardware queues configured straight through like that then of course we need to set up the time synchronization usually in a TSN system, you need some PTP hardware clock, so-called PHC, that is synced between the PTP masters and slaves. And it means that the RMS offset between a PHC and the, the GM, the ground master clock, is usually smaller than 100 nanosecond. And the PHC and the system clock so the so-called clock real time, they also need to be synced. And then that means you have a, a system clock offset smaller than 100 nanosecond. And the PHC time is usually set in a so-called TAI coordinated time, while of course the system clock you might have usually in UTC. And so you need to configure a so-called UTC to TAI offset for your system clock. That is the clock real time versus the clock TIA. The way that can be done is, is for example, with the PTP for Linux project, there is the binary PTP for L, and you say, okay, minus I interface ETH1, and then that you use some configuration, minus F, the GPTP CFG file, and then you can say, uh, we just do a step threshold of one, and then you, you start that. That starts the PTP daemon basically in the background. And then with the PMC utility, you then actually set the whole grandmaster configuration. That is given here. I'm not gonna go in full detail here. That's just, uh, yeah, that's all this configuration like we discussed. And then with the PHD to SYS, you also make sure that your system clock actually uses this configuration. And usually when you have done that on multiple systems, you can use uh, some script like this check clocks. Uh, when you uh, Google for that, I also have the, some references at the end. You find that that will just basically check and make sure that you have them all synced. And then the next step is that you basically configure your network scheduling. So, for example, with the MQ PreOQ disk, you make sure that the inet QoS Q0, oh, that the, the, make sure you're not using Q0 because the Q0 is not uh, supporting hardware CBS. So we just in this example, I avoid, avoid the Q0 for any kind of AV, 
be uh, processing. But we can set the socket SO priority 2 to the traffic class 2, and uh, the 3 to traffic class 1, and all the other socket priorities, we can leave them on the Q0, which anyway doesn't support any such uh, priority stuff. And you do that with the TC utility, that's basically the command that configures it like that. And then for the CBS QDisk, we can use Q1 for video and Q2 for audio. And that basically, the next two commands configure that. And then the P50 QDisk, that's basically just a fallback. So by default, the Q0, which doesn't support the TSN, basically just uses regular P50. So all the, the rest of your traffic that you might have on your system can, can just you go through that queue. This shows the ALSA AF audio demo. So you have to set up the AF0 and the Convert to Zero plugin. You can do that in etsyasan.com. I've shown it on the right side there. So you basically uh, create the PCM AAF0 and the PCM convert to zero with that configuration. And you basically define the Ethernet interface, which AAF, AAF runs on, and then socket priority and stream ID. And you also need to convert it from big to little endian. And then you can use a talker, like for example, speaker test, who guys play, have played with also before are probably familiar with that. You can just use speaker test and then uh, use device AAF0, and on the listener side, you can, for example, use uh, A record uh, with A play like that. And if you want to check which Q disks are actually in use when you do such samples, you can use the TC minus S Q disk. That will list you that. And in the G streamer, for the audio demo, I've given here also the commands how you can do the talker and the listener part. And then, of course, more interesting is the video demo. So you can do that. The demo actually shows two clocks on, on that. You see there, there are two times given. And on the left side, you have basically have the timestamp that gets added to record before it gets encoded on the talker side and the time on the right side is basically added at the very end at presentation time where it actually shows the video. And that way you can now really, this timestamp should of course be uh, in sync after it takes, might take a couple seconds to just sync it all up when you start it all up. But then it actually shows you the real time offset. And also here you can check this, the queuing with, with the TCS queue disk. Very good. I'm, I have here such a system basically running, just, you know, for anybody, I can reboot it again. This is, for example, such a uh, Verdin. I'm excited plus system that uh, makes use of, of this kind of hardware and uh, has the DW Mac basically configured like that here on the internet. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time, so I cannot really show you much more here, but that's, that's just uh, on this system, the, it's this Ethernet zero that, that is using this. Okay, any questions so far? A little bit too much detail, so you probably have to digest it first. Uh, also on my slides, you actually find the references where you can read up more on this topic and if you have any further questions, you are welcome to also contact me directly uh, via Toradex support.
Thank you very much.